Hello everybody, wherever you are and whenever you are. Here's another deck tech for uh, a different version of the uh, blue-white mid-range style deck that we had played uh, previously. We, I know we pl featured the Currivore deck uh, through a couple leagues here on this channel, and uh, I just wanted to revisit the deck. Um, to be honest, like I said, when I'm thinking about decks here to, to sit down and to play through a league, I'm a little, a little burnt out of like just the hard control uh uh, style of deck, so I wanted to give this another try, and uh, I'm also hoping to play in a modern event this weekend. So, and this is the deck that I think that I want to play. So, I thought, uh, why not? Why not run this through again? I hope that you, I hope that you are enjoying the the blue white mid range uh, content here on the channel. I think it's a really neat deck. Um, like I said, this one's a little different than the deck we played last time. Uh, last the last two leagues, mid range decks were pretty much just a direct port of the uh, MTGO user Currybores deck that they uh, managed to score a, a rash of 5-0s with there. And uh, this deck here is in the style, and when I say in the style, I mean, again, a direct port of the deck uh, by Neothinker, or uh, Francisco Amati, Amati, however, however you uh, pronounce that fine gentleman's last name. He is uh, kind of the linchpin of an online group uh, on Facebook for Blue-White Control and also uh, Blue White Mid Range and a couple other uh, offshoots. He does admin work and stuff like that uh, for those groups. And uh, this is the this is the version of the deck that he's been playing. Um, he is running uh, two copies, two main deck copies. I guess we're jumping right in here of Rune Halo, which is a card that is near and dear to my heart. Not only do I adore the artwork, was it set because uh, it come from one of my one of my favorite blocks, but I uh, I recently listened to uh, Francisco talking about the deck and how uh, and how adaptive it can be to the meta and everything, and I think he's right, and I think Rune Halo is definitely one of those cards that pushes that envelope a lot harder than just about any other card in the deck, to be honest. I mean, this card covers a lot of ground, and um, it has a lot of really interesting little uh, shreds of value you can get out of it between uh, being able to bounce it, you know, and return it to your hand, or it can be effectively a, a removal spell, Um there's a couple. These are anecdotal, of course, but I can clearly remember a couple of games that I played when I used to play a blue-white mid-range deck with uh, with Gideon and Jace Architect of Thought, and um, that was back when Infect was big in the meta. And I remember having this card in hand a few times and naming Glistener Elf or naming Blighting Agent, and it effectively removed two to three of their creatures from the game. I also remember distinctly uh, one time playing this against a Zoo opponent. I named this turn two after he played just a single. Uh, Wild Nakatl, and um, well, at the end of that game, he he scooped several turns later and showed me two more Nakatls in hand that he never even bothered playing. So, it's a really interesting card, and it is it can be uh, extremely powerful in the right context. So, I'm really interested to try this out, and see how it works for the deck. Uh, compared to the deck we'd played previously, we uh, he's brought one of the uh, Liras in from the in from the side. I actually am playing a Bane Slayer in the sideboard instead of a second. Uh, Lyra, and that's simply just due to my what my collection has in it. So, um, but in uh, Mr. Amati's deck, this would be a second a second Lyra, which of course pairs very very well with our Restoration Angels, which is pretty much the the crux of this entire deck, uh, from what I gather. Like playing this card well, like if you if you're having trouble leveraging this card, then then you're probably not getting as much value out of the deck as you probably need to be. In order to uh, to attain a high level of success, because again, this is a uh, this is definitely the epitome the epitome sorry of like a 50-50 style deck where no game is ever going to be handed up to you on a on a platter. And again, when I say when I say things like that, I'm not talking down to other decks. I'm not saying oh yeah, that other stupid deck that just little oh, slams cards and doesn't know. Every deck, no matter how mind-numbingly straightforward it may seem to play. Uh, there's there's nuance, there's sequencing, and there's a lot of a lot that goes into that. So again, when I make comments like that, don't think that I'm don't think that I'm the you know the, the maybe stereotypical blue player that just thinks oh yes he's so smart you know playing those playing those counter spells look at him go no that's not that's not how I how I think of myself. But anyway, little tangent aside. Um, so again, a 50-50 kind of deck. It's similar to very similar to um, uh, like the Stoneblade decks. Uh, in Legacy and things like that, where you really gotta, 
you really got to kind of work for it. You know, if you, if you make, if you make a one small mistake, all right, you might be able to get away with a couple of those against uh, an opponent of an even skill level, but you'll really need to leverage uh, your play skill in order to, uh, in order to cross the finish line here. So um, we have our normal, normal blue white style tools here in uh, path to exile. Of course, Snapcaster made some main deck negates and some light counter magic. Again, we're not, not a full on, uh, control deck. We have somewhat of a proactive game plan. Um, and you can see that this deck, another another difference is that it, it has cut the Kitchen Finks. Uh, and again, a little bit of life gain can sometimes go a long way, so that uh, Lyra can play double duty double duty there in respect to that. So some Wall of Omens can help to uh, keep our life total high, and they also can be uh, blinked with Restoration Angel to draw additional cards and even to have them survive an additional turn to soak up a little bit more damage. Um, couple of Vendillion clicks. Again, they can put a clock on our opponent and also serve as some disruption. Another great target for Restoration Angel. Uh, this Here's an interesting inclusion. One copy of Venser Shaper Savant. So, I'm not going to lie, I've never cast this card before. So, I'm sure that I will uh, make some make some silly silly mistakes with it here and there, but uh, it's got some interesting lines of text here. It can, it can bounce all kinds of stuff. Uh, it can bounce any, any permanent and non-hexproof permanent anyway, I guess. And uh, as well as it can also bounce spells back to our opponent's hand um, and comes attached with a 2-2 body. So, too bad we don't have Caracas in modern. No, actually, that's probably for the best, but because he is, of course, a legendary creature. Uh, mana base is uh, is pretty pretty stock for uh, for a list like this. You know, we got some we got some some basics here for the uh, for the usual reasons. Um, some ways to get said basics. A pair of Hallowed Fountains, a pair of Glacial Fortresses, our Field of Ruin Suite here, and uh, four Colonnades. So, so again, we're not going to be we're not going to be making a dash for the finish line with this deck, but uh, we do have the tools to clean or sorry, to clean to turn the corner rather quickly uh, when the time comes. Also, has a spicy uh, Blessed Alliance here. There's one more of those in the sideboard, as you'll see here in a minute. So, as mentioned, Blessed Alliance. I love this card, Celestial Purge, really good catch-all answer for a lot of very troublesome, hard-to-deal-with red and black permanents in the modern format, running three Rest in Peace right now, because of course the meta is very, very heavy with graveyard interaction, so we want to be able to shut those uh, shut those decks down whenever we get the chance to do so. A couple of Stony Silence, I'm sure there's some artifact-related uh, nonsense floating around there. As mentioned, another copy, uh, another big angel in the sideboard. Cataclysmic Gearhulk. Uh, this card is really cool, and uh, it came through for us in a few games in the last leagues we played with this deck as well. Uh, so very interesting. Basically, the card Cataclysm stapled onto a creature, and uh, so you basically choose one of every type of pretty much non-land permanent, and then you sacrifice the rest when this bad boy comes into play. So you uh, again blinkable with Restoration Angel. Of course, obviously your angel will go away if, assuming you don't have any other artifacts in play. Because again, this is an artifact creature, so you can select the Cataclysmic Gear Hulk for your artifact and select uh, like the Resto Angel or whatever other creature you have in play as your creature to keep around. So that's an, an interesting little um, little factoid there about that card. So just some additional counter magic here for combo decks, control decks, things like that. Um, and then to round it off, we have a couple of guys to St. Trap for those matchups where we really just need to uh, put the pedal to the metal and uh, close things off. It also just comes in sometimes, maybe against a deck like uh, Burn, perhaps, as just another body uh, on the field. Although I said that, now I didn't look at the main deck close enough to know what you would even take out. But uh, in Burn, maybe the Cryptic Commands, cut two Cryptic Commands for, for a pair of Geists. Yeah, seems seems all right. But, um, all right, either way, there's the deck, and uh, we will get into uh, some matches here very shortly, so stick around. <laughs> 